I would like to begin by saying that never did I ever think that I would be posting here. I mean, I'm an avid reader of this forum and love to listen to the stories that some of my favorite YouTubers narrate, but I never imagined that I would be one of the people to have something to tell. So anyway, this literally happened like three days ago. I'm a 23-year-old female. I was out grocery shopping with my mom at a local grocery store. We had been there only a few minutes when I first noticed him. An old man with a shock of white hair standing in the bread aisle with his dog. It was a small dog and I'm assuming it was a service dog considering he had him in the store. Passing by him, I nodded and smiled at him and his dog as to be polite because he was literally staring at me. So passing by without any recognition of that would have felt slightly rude. I felt a little creeped out by him, but I couldn't tell you why. He didn't really look scary or do anything out of the ordinary other than stare at me. But there was just something about him that gave me a negative vibe. We carried on with our shopping, and I didn't see the man again until we were in the checkout lane. He was already paying just as we made our way to the cashier and right before he walked out he turned around and stared for a couple seconds at my mom. Then his eyes fell on me and he smirked. I don't know why, but I suddenly felt scared. My stomach felt like it was doing flips, and then my heart rate increased. I just casually looked around the store and acted as if I didn't notice, but the feeling he gave me was more than unsettling. It took us at least 20 to 25 minutes at the checkout, as we were there doing a full-on shopping trip. So needless to say, when we walked outside and over to our car, I was very surprised to see the same old man with his dog slowly approaching the vehicle. My mom didn't seem to notice right away, but as he got closer he began speaking to her. He asked her if she would be interested in selling her car. She drives a classic Mustang convertible that has been completely restored and stuff like that. He claimed that he owned another car just like it, but had wrecked it and was looking for one just like it. As my luck would have it, my mom was actually looking to sell the car because she was tired of the upkeep and wanted something new so when he offered to pay her a thousand dollars more than she had invested in it. She was interested. She offered for them to exchange numbers so they could discuss the transaction at a later time. She'd think that would have been the end of it seeing that an arrangement had been made. But he just lingered as we loaded up our car with groceries. I wasn't really paying attention to the conversation because he gave me such a creepy vibe. I was just trying to get the car loaded as quickly as possible so we could get the hell out of there, but when he asked her, so is that your daughter, I immediately began to pay attention. Of course she replied, yes, and he proceeded to tell her how beautiful he thought I was as if I weren't even there and couldn't hear him. He then asked her what kind of work I did for a living, which I thought was kind of odd, but obviously my mother was oblivious so she proceeded to tell him that I was a student and wasn't currently working but was looking for a part-time job. He immediately began to smile and said, well, I just happen to have a job she may be interested in. He went on to talk about how he owned several rental properties and needed someone that could come once a week to his place and the rental properties to clean. He said he'd pay me $250 for each location and he'd pay in cash every Friday. That sounded great. Too good to be true actually, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that something was seriously off about this guy. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I agreed to consider it and told him that I'd let him know something by that following Monday as the day this took place was Saturday. We all said our goodbyes and we got in our car to head home. I didn't even notice that he had been behind us until we pulled into our neighborhood and I saw him keep going straight as we turned left. There is only two ways in and out of our small neighborhood. We were home for around 20 minutes when my mom's boyfriend came in from outside and asked me if I knew someone who drove a white truck. I stared at him in disbelief as he told me it was some old man and he asked for me by name and wanted me to come out so we could talk. Now keep in mind we had already discussed when I would call him and not once did I mention where I lived or for that matter give him permission to just come over uninvited. I refused to go out so my mom went out and told him I was on an important phone call and asked him what he wanted. He casually told her that he just wanted to talk to me. He literally said, no creepy shit or anything, I just want to talk to her. I have cameras on all four corners of my property, so I was watching them and made note that instead of circling around and pulling out of my long driveway like everyone else does, he backed all the way down my driveway making it impossible to get a tag number. He told us that his name was Larry at the store, 
but when he called my phone like literally an hour after he left my house, the name on the caller ID was Anthony Johnson. I immediately did a reverse number search just to see if maybe his middle name was Larry, but after having to pay for a background check to get that information, I quickly learned that Larry was clearly nowhere in his name, so my suspicions only increased. I blocked his number and the next day my mom said she saw him drive around our block on at least three separate occasions, ranging from morning to mid-afternoon. It's been three days now and I've seen him twice sitting down at the boat landing that's around the curb from my house. Many people go down there to fish, but I have a feeling that he's not there to fish at all. I want to call the police, but he hasn't technically did anything wrong and I could be overreacting, but I don't think that I am, do any of you? That is pretty much why I'm here. I would like some opinions as to if anyone thinks that I'm overreacting or does this seem creepy and odd to any of you as well. Should I take precaution and keep my guard up or just forget it, or should I actually call him and consider the job? I always go with my gut and right now it's telling me that something isn't quite right here. Please let me know your thoughts. This is honestly the strangest thing that has ever happened to me, and I still truly cannot wrap my head around it. A couple of months ago I was home alone while my partner was out running errands. I was taking a shower and I heard the bell that we keep on our door ring and someone say, hello. I had a podcast on shower running in the fans, so I said, honey is that you? And they said, yep. It sounded like my partner and so I continued to ask a couple of things and they responded. When I got out of the shower my back door my wide open, my dog was pacing around and my partner wasn't home. I called him and asked if he had left again and he was still out. I checked his location and he was indeed still cleaning my car a town over. I had an entire conversation with a stranger in my home while I was showering not knowing. Nothing was taken, my dog was not harmed. The police couldn't really figure it out. To this day I think about it and just get chills of what could have happened if there was a different motive. I do not have a history of auditory hallucinations or dissociation with reality. Has this ever happened to anyone or have you heard of anything like this happened? The fact that I'm fine is great, but it is such a strange thing to do to someone. This was about four or five-ish years ago. Back then I lived with my mother in a shed on a farm surrounded by woodland. Our farmland was part of a larger piece of farmland that was split up and sold off. So we did have nabers though they were roughly half a kilometer away each. We loved that cause of the privacy, it wasn't like there was nobody nearby I couldn't go to if I needed help. That thought is what had me fearlessly walking alone at night between the hours of 7-8 p.m., sometimes fluctuating from earlier to later depending on the day. Sometimes I even went out on a walk at 2 a.m. in the morning because I was restless and couldn't sleep. Looking back, this was incredibly stupid and after this incident I never walked after 6 p.m. ever again, always making sure there was at least some sunlight left when I set out. The route I always took was a road circuit. The first part was out in the open in front of all the other farms including my own. If anything had happened at least one person would have noticed and reception was pretty good, so I would have also been able to call someone. The second half on the other hand was concealed by about 200 meters of woods between the farms and the back road, stretching the full two kilometers at the back of the farm, and it was during that part of the walk when I had this creepy encounter. It was late at night, I can't remember what time exactly, but it was pitch black with the exception of my torchlight. I was about to approach the turn in the loop that would bring me out into the open again when I heard it. Help. It was this monotone voice that repeatedly asked for help. It didn't seem panicked in the least. I took my headphones out and turned my music off to make sure I was hearing correctly, but it didn't stop. Help. Help. A very stupid part of me almost responded, because for some reason my first instinct was, Oh no, someone's in trouble like a naive kid, even though I would have been like 16 or 17 at the time. Of course, then my brain kicked in, and I realized that approaching that voice was just about the stupidest thing I could do, so I started quietly backing away. Unfortunately, my cat had followed me on the walk and wasn't backing away with me, no, she was walking towards the voice softly hissing. I remember desperately trying to get her to come back towards me without alerting the voice to my presence just in case they hadn't noticed me yet. But I was getting scared and didn't want to stay there a moment more so I ran forwards and grabbed her. 
then turned around and bolted back towards my house. I don't know if it was stupid of me to turn my back to the voice as I was making so much noise while running that there was no way they didn't know I was there and I had no way of knowing if they were giving chase. I was so terrified that whole time, the image of someone cloaked in shadows chasing me entered my mind, and even though I couldn't hear anyone behind me, I never once slowed down until I was back safe and sound within my house. It doesn't end there though. Despite how terrifying it was, there was still a part of me that was concerned about whoever it was, because what if they really had needed help? So I asked my mother to drive us to the location, another very stupid decision considering what we found, that being nothing we called out and called out, but nobody answered. We didn't get out of our car though, luckily neither of us were that stupid. We drove home, having seen nothing and no one. But it still bothered me in the morning so I had my mother drive us over again and we searched the immediate area. Nothing, no indication that anyone had been there, there was no body which admittedly was a drastic thing to search for. But I know shock can leave you eerily calm which could have explained the monotone voice and the lack of response afterwards made me fear that we'd been too late and we'd find a body in the morning. I don't know if I would have preferred this outcome because at least then I would have had a face to the voice. But no, we found absolutely nothing, and to this day I have no idea who that voice belonged to and why they were monotonously calling out for help. My mind has naturally come to some chilling conclusions and theories that leave me unable to sleep. Rapist, kidnapper, serial killer, all the classic horror stories, but I guess I'll never really know for sure. This happened seven and a half years ago, June 23rd, 2016 while was cleaning out my house. I was renting a house for a year and the year was almost up. I wasn't going to be living there the next year so it was time for me to start cleaning out and moving my stuff to my next place. The house that I had at the time was fairly small but it was plenty of space for just me. I lived there by myself and I had just finished cleaning out the living room other than some basic furniture and I had moved on to clean the kitchen. There were quite a few cabinets, so many that I didn't use a good number of them. I was looking through some of the ones that I didn't use to make sure that there was nothing I had in them. One of them I opened up and I saw something in the back corner. It looked like some type of shirt or rag. I grabbed it and saw that I didn't think it was mine, but when I moved it, it revealed a small white lever that I could barely see. The cabinet was in the corner sorted by the sink and halfway blocked by the stove. I thought it was just another pipe but it just looked a little different to me. I got inside and had to crawl inside the cabinet, which was pretty large. Once I got inside, I saw there was a small trap door to the side leading into the wall. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. You had to be completely inside in order to see the detail of it, and I decided to open the door, which led to an extremely narrow hallway with a sort of crawl space. But when I got farther inside, I was horrified. I saw that there was food as well as several blankets, as if someone had been living inside of there. The good news, at least to me, is that whoever was in there was gone. I tried to make sense of it and figure out how long the person had been there and how I didn't know about it. I was gone from the house a lot with work and other stuff, but I didn't know how it was possible for someone to live in there without me knowing. I continued cleaning until it got pretty late, and the next day after work I continued. I was still kind of in shock with finding a secret room in my house and decided to look at it once again. I opened the cabinet and went inside, then I pulled the lever open just like I had the previous day. But this time, as soon as I opened it, I saw a movement and then saw a person for a split second. They slammed the door back shut on me and I immediately turned and ran all the way out of my house to my car and then called the police. I was so scared that I started driving away as well. I opened up my phone, told the police the whole situation, and they came to my house a short time later to find that whoever had been there was now gone. I was absolutely disgusted knowing that this random person had access to my house for who knows how long. It felt like a vivid nightmare I need to wake up from. When I opened up my phone to call the police, it showed that the date was June 23, 2016. I still remember this date seven years later. It stayed with me like a scar. A scar I don't know if I will ever heal from. Luckily for me, I moved out the next week. I really don't know how long the person was living in my secret room, but thankfully it never gave me a problem. 
thanks for reading my true horror story. As someone who has already experienced things like home invasion, I would always suggest that you lock your doors, because you can never know what people can do when they are in your house. This happened when I was 14. At that time AOL was in full swing and I found a guy that said that he lived near me. We messaged back and forth for a couple days and then he asked if we could hang out. Not during the day, no he wanted to come over in the middle of the night. I stupidly gave him my real address. I was home alone, my parents are divorced, and at that point I lived with my dad who worked nights. For some reason I just got this really bad anxious feeling when he said he was on his way. I turned off all the lights, locked all the doors and windows and just sat in my living room peeking out of the curtains of my living room window. I see a car pull up and this dude isn't 16 like he said. He's got to be late 20s, early 30s. He knocks. Of course I'm not answering that door. I'm scared shitless at this point. He then starts to knock louder. No answer. Then he starts to pound on the door. I just sat there frozen and waited for him to leave. Fab God, I listened to my instincts. Anytime you get that feeling, you should listen to it without question. For purposes, I'm using a throwaway account and will use a fake name. This happened a few days ago, whilst I was on my way home from visiting my friend's house. I was driving on a back road late at night in my Tesla Model 3 while it was on auto drive. I'll admit that I was not paying attention to the road and I was on my phone while I had my music in the car playing. The ride was okay and chill for a while, but I'm not really sure because I was not paying attention to the time. Out of nowhere my car immediately braked and made an alarming sound. I was scared shitless and immediately took control of the wheel and looked through the windshield. When I looked I saw a figure standing inches from my car barely avoiding being hit. My heart was racing from the impact and now seeing what I could only assume to be a person. They didn't even flinch from the sight of almost being hit. I looked at them for a good 10 seconds before I put my car in park and turned on the megaphone to ask them are they okay. They didn't respond and proceeded to walk near my window. I locked my doors while they were approaching because I was terrified. They asked me if I could roll the window down to speak to them, but I refused and told them that I could hear them from the other side. I then asked why were they out here all alone in the cold, and they told me that their car had broken down and that they were hoping someone would stop to help them. As they were talking I got a good look at their face and they appeared to be 2530. They also asked me my name, and I told them my name was Rebecca, they told me their name was Ashton. After that small talk they attempted, I told them that I would be calling someone to come assist them with their situation. They weren't happy with that, and insisted that I drop them off to a friend's house who lived nearby. That's when I become really freaked out and suspicious. They had told me they were waiting for someone, and now they need to be dropped off. I then put my car back into drive and told them again from the window since megaphone is not available in park that I would call someone to come help them. They then tried to reach for the door handle, but I guess they forgot that Tesla handles are embedded into the car. When they did that I immediately stepped on the pedal and went flying down the road. I didn't even look into my rear view mirror or put the car back into autopilot. The whole ride back I was scared shitless. I got back into a main road where I would hope to see cars and just floored it home. I couldn't get my mind off of it for the rest of the night. I have suspicions that that guy was not alone, and that there was other people with them. I pray that they didn't get someone else who wasn't as lucky as me. I will never in my life stop to help some random person ever again. The story I will give you takes place in Virginia Beach, Virginia in 1997. I was 11 years old at the time. My parents were divorced and I was staying the summer with my father in his apartment with him. My dad worked long hours and I spent a lot of time alone. I was bored most of the time and struck up a friendship with a middle-aged woman who lived on the second floor of the apartment building across from ours. She was a kleptomaniac and because of the numerous charges I was told her daughter was in foster care but she spent the night on weekends with her. She liked my company because, like me, she was a little lonely and bored, but more than that I cleaned her house for free out of boredom and my desire to please. 
One day while we were watching talk shows midday she casually asked me if my father knew anyone that did house clearings. She was aware of his metaphysical interests and activities. I told her not that I knew of and asked her why. She told me that just now and often she saw a dark shadow go past her second floor bedroom window which she could see from the couch but not me. She said it gave her a sinking sick feeling and she thought it was bad energy. Noticing my discomfort on the subject, she stopped talking about it. A couple weeks later, her daughter came to spend the weekend, and I stayed the night with her since we were also friends and close in age. We were trying to fall asleep in the daughter's bedroom, which had a window facing the same side that her mother's did, which she frequently saw the black shadow out of. I felt like someone was staring me down so intensely my tummy started churning. I did not say anything because I thought it was just in my head from what her mother had said a few weeks prior. While trying to tell myself it was just my imagination, the girl asked me if I felt like someone was watching us. I said yes and she suggested we move to the couch. As we got up and were walking into the hallway with my comforter trailing behind me, I was looking down out of discomfort and as we passed the open door of her mother's bedroom I saw two black boots Victorian style with heels and buttons going up to the ankle standing at the foot of her mother's bed. My eyes followed them up to a white lace trim long skirt, hands neatly folded at the waist, a frilly bust with buttons that went to the top of a turtleneck collar. When my eyes met hers she was plain-faced staring back at me. She had long sleeves and clearly dressed in Victorian garb with dark long hair pulled up to a bun on the top of her head. I threw the comforter over my head, ran as fast as I could to the couch, and told myself it wasn't real with my head covered until I eventually fell asleep. I told no one about what I saw as I wanted to believe it was just my imagination. Despite the fact I had experienced supernatural experiences prior, I have always doubted my intuition and sensitivity. The next week the mother and I were sitting on the couch watching our talk shows when she saw the dark mass pass by bedroom window again. She told me so and said that even though she doesn't like it the apartment did not need a clearing because there was a woman that stood at the end of her bed from the first night she moved in that protected her. She went on to describe her exactly as I had seen her. My blood ran cold as I hadn't told anyone about what I saw and I still did not disclose to my neighbor that I had seen her too. It was a long time before I told anyone as it had scared me shitless. I didn't spend too much time over her apartment anymore after that day, and if I did I made sure I was always in the same room as someone else. I have several stories from Mexico, a place of many myths and legends. This particular one is recounted by a friend of mine about his uncle and his uncle's friend, who found themselves in a horrifying circumstance. So, my buddy's uncle and his friend were headed home on a highway one night years ago in the state of Oaxaca. They were riding in one of those old flatbed trucks used to transport vegetables or fruits that had been picked that day. They were farmers, a rarity in Oaxaca at the time, as it was very rural and had only recently had a concrete highway installed. As they were returning home, the uncle noticed something in the rearview mirror. He made out what seemed to be a horse about 150 feet away, he couldn't really make out its features and didn't think anything of it until he drifted off to sleep in the passenger seat. While he slept, his uncle had a small nightmare of a horse with large black eyes running up to his passenger side. The dream startled him awake. He gathered his bearings and looked over to his friend, who was driving with a terrified expression at about 50 miles per hour, quite fast for a truck of that size at the time. Why are you driving so fast? he asked. His buddy explained that for the past couple of miles, the horse in the rearview mirror had been slowly inching closer and closer to the vehicle. Panic began to settle in as immense fear washed over them. They sped up to about 65 miles per hour to try and get away, but the clanking of the hooves of this horse slowly got louder and louder behind them. The driver instructed his friend not to turn around and look anymore, but to just look ahead and nod at the horse because it seemed to gain on them whenever they glanced back at it. The uncle closed his eyes in fear, only listening, and when the hooves inched closer and closer, he glanced to the side window and saw the large black eyes of the horse looking directly at his friend from the passenger side, as it had now caught up. It was just like his dream. He screamed for his friend not to look, and to just look straight ahead because the horse seemed fixated on him. They sped up as much as they could, but the horse kept a swift pace, still staring at the driver. 
When he finally glanced back, he began to cry, overwhelmed with emotion and panic, when suddenly the horse began to slow down. As it did, they saw it in the rearview mirror once more, except this time it had no legs. It was just standing in the road, floating, staring at them with its huge black eyes. When they arrived home, they told the grandfather of the man driving what they had witnessed. He told them that the road that was built there had gone straight through sacred and vegetatory land, and they had been lucky to drive past the area at that time of night and survive because everyone who had failed had the ground there salted, meaning it was washed with bad energy. Years ago, when I was pregnant, we were just getting ready to go to bed and it was late, about 1.30 a.m. This woman knocked on the door and my husband answered. She was clearly high and jittery and looking around everywhere. She asked if she could use the toilet. My husband said no, this is not a public restroom. We both got a really bad vibe of her. She was quite a big woman and clearly something wasn't right with her. She started to try and open our security door. Rattling the handle, but we have always been very conscious of keeping it locked the minute we walk in. My husband told her to go away, and he shut the door. She started to bang on the door, screaming that she needed to use the toilet. My husband opened the door again and told her to piss off, or he was calling the cops. She stopped, froze, and for about twenty seconds stood there, staring at us, and then she turned around and walked away. We turned off all the lights and looked through the blinds and saw her next door talking to two people. I said to my husband that was a setup for a home invasion and he agreed. The thing was I had actually seen this woman around before quite a few times so she could have known that I was heavily pregnant and that would make us a good target because we would have been compliant. People have a tendency to be more compliant when they're trying to protect their family. I reckon she followed me home. I never saw her again. So I'm currently staying at an Airbnb with some family before I go back to my normal boring life and have been noticing some things that just don't feel right to me. 1. There are no normal doors in the house, only barn doors with their bottom stopper removed which make it incredibly easy to simply push them off the hinges. 2. There are peak holes in different areas of the house that makes it easy to see into other rooms without someone seeing you. But what has been the final straw for me is that last night I swear I started hearing movement in the attic of the house, but have no way to check because I don't have a step ladder that can reach the entrance. Update as I am writing this. I have just heard tapping on my ceiling. I will update this in the morning if I have not been murdered by a serial killer, wish me luck. Before bed update because I realized I forgot to mention why I'm not as paranoid or worried as someone who is alone might be. I have a 180 pounds dog that would rip anyone to shreds if they tried to hurt me or my family. And yes, she is awesome. Update. Seems we have a pretty good end to this little creepy encounter. I messaged the owner and he drove over to the Airbnb to look at the stuff. Explained that one of the previous renters was a bit insane in the membrane and drilled holes in the walls and how he hasn't had the chance to fix them. As for the noises in the attic, owner grabbed a ladder to let me look around and I found a big fat raccoon up there. So, I was in university at the time and I didn't live on campus because my home was really nearby and commuting wasn't the worst. So I came home and went up to change before I went to the basement. I used to hang out in the basement and you can see the living room and couches as you pass by. I went down towards the basement, looked in and saw someone sitting and apparently watching TV note. Sometimes someone would leave the TV on so it would seem like someone was home because my dad thought it would scare off robbers, but at the time I was like whatever and then kept going down to the basement. I booted up my computer and sat for a bit, and then realized that actually no one was supposed to be home because everyone was at work. I did eventually go upstairs again and glanced in on the living room and saw nothing there and I went through the house to confirm that yeah, I was home alone. Then I went about my day because I just ignore things that are scary for a few days before I tell someone about it because that's what I do. This happened around 13 years ago when I was 11 and my best friend at the time was staying over my house for sleepover. Due to nature of my parents' work, we were alone the whole day until 6 p.m. 
This happened around 4 or 5 p.m. We were laying around in my bed and discussing something about our dancing lessons. Then we stared to talk shit about one dance teacher. At one point, we both went quiet and were looking at each other in silence when suddenly some female voice said, I know, right? As if it agreed with what we were saying. Our faces turned pale in panic, and I went looking around house if someone came home early. Of course we were alone and no one could pass my room from the outside since it's in the second floor. The voice was kind of high-pitched and basic sounding so it couldn't belong to any of us. From that moment I rarely say something out loud when I'm alone because I'm afraid some random female voice will agree with me. I was home alone while my mom or stepdad or half-brother went to my stepdad's parents' house over three-hour drive away. It was nighttime and I was on the couch watching Spongebob and talking on the phone with my then-boyfriend. Suddenly I heard something solid hit the floor in my mom's master bathroom. Going up to check what it was, I discovered that it was a Thomas the Tank Engine train that my half-brother played with when in the bathtub. My mom had placed it on the completely flat bathroom counter behind a straightening iron and a hairdryer. How in the holy hell did it roll off when it was on a flat surface and behind those things? My girlfriend and I were getting ready to go camping. We had packed all of our stuff in the car and she only had to do one more run while I waited for her in the car. The parking lot for my building is out the back door but there's wasps and she's afraid so she went out the front door and walked around the building. After she gets to the car, I remember that I forgot to grab something so I go in the back door. I look at the front door and notice that the door has been latched. It would have been impossible for her to latch the door from the outside and I watched her walk around the building so there's no way she didn't go out the front door. The latch is designed so that it can't just swing closed, it has to be deliberately engaged. If my building is haunted, at least the ghost is looking out for us. Well, I was staying in a former brothel in Santa Fe, New Mexico one night. The owner was telling stories about the house as I was getting ready to go to sleep. As I was dosing off the last awake, I hear women laughing in the distance, slowly growing louder, then it seemed to pass right through the room and out the other side. No car sounds but moving laughter like 3 o'clock in the morning. I woke my wife up to explain that for the first time I thought I heard a ghost. I was convinced, and I don't believe in ghosts. It was chilling, like it moved through the room. I've never been able to explain. Sounded like about six women laughing with an echoey sound. Built up slowly then quickly passed through the room and faded in an instant. So last year I was 16, and I don't remember the circumstances of me being alone, but I think my sister was at a friend's house and my parents were at a party with their adult friends. I'm antisocial anyway and I didn't want to go out. I get a text from my mom saying something to the effect of, me and your dad are too drunk to go home, and are you okay sleeping by yourself tonight? I live in a town of 14,000, and there hadn't been a murder in a solid 10 years, my dad worked as a cop for six years in that town and the worst thing to happen was a single non-consensual stuff to a girl I went to school with. Not a lot happens here. I felt safe to stay home alone, so I texted back and locked all the doors. Then I watched some TV in the living room. About three hours later around midnight, my dog is Sheba in u -runt, so Tiny starts losing her shit at the back door, which is made entirely of glass. My dog is really sweet, so the sudden barking is out of character. I go over to the back door and look through the blinds and I swear I saw something moving. It had to be a person I saw its shadow across my fence. I freak out because I think there's someone in my backyard. I quickly gather my dog and cat, grab a small handgun my dad said to only use for emergencies and lock myself and my animals in the basement. I couldn't leave my cat and dog behind so I stayed with them. Now I'm staring at the locked door with a gun in my hand. I know there's someone out there, and it's only confirmed by the loud banging I hear coming from upstairs on the back door, and even on the glass windows like they were trying to break in. Now you're probably wondering, why didn't I call the cops? Well, my dear reader, I had that same thought, but came to the horrific realization that in my rush, I forgot my phone upstairs, and I'm absolutely not going back up there.
so I wait out the banging and then start to hear this unholy screaming. It sounds masculine and now I'm even more scared. I'm shaking and honestly sobbing hoping this guy doesn't manage his way inside. Eventually the banging stops and everything quiets down. I can't sleep because of paranoia and end up staying up all night without my phone. The next day I don't tell my parents about what happens because, I don't know, I just didn't want the police involved. However, I learned from my dad that my ex-boyfriend was apparently stalking our house for months before and was caught that night at around 3 a.m. Apparently he was deemed insane and put in a psych ward. Lordy, that was a ride. Not home alone, but I was in the kitchen at night. It was late and we were getting ready to lock up and go to bed. I was the last person in the back of the house, so I proceeded to turn off all the lights. The switch is by the back door, so I have to cross the dark room to get to the hallway. I flick off the light and I'm shrouded in near total darkness. The only faint light source is the glow of a TV that's on in a guest room down the hallway where my aunt will be sleeping for the night. So as I'm walking towards the hallway, I see the dark silhouette of what I thought was my aunt rounding the corner to enter the kitchen. The figure sees me coming, kinda hesitates like in a surprised, oh, body language. I don't react because that's just my aunt who forgot to get something and is returning to the room. I twist my body to the side and the figure twists its body to the side and we squeeze through the doorframe at the same time. It didn't even register that I didn't brush by anything solid like a warm body in the process. To get to my room I have to go further down the hall and pass by my parents' bedroom. In there I see my actual aunt deep in conversation with my folks and I go from zero to one hundred pretty quick. Have you been sitting there the whole time? I shriek. Everyone stops and looks at me weird. I bolt back to the kitchen, flicking on switches as I go shouting, Hello! Who's in here? Nothing. Doors and windows are locked. House alarm is armed. I run back to my family, and they're still trying to figure out WTF is going on. I tell them about the figure that I mistook for my aunt. My mother declares that if I didn't feel like it was there to scare me, then there's no reason to be afraid of it. I should note that she grew up in the same house, seeing unexplainable stuff too. I was in my bedroom at my grandparents' house. My parents had moved out of town and I was home from college, so I was spending the night there to be closer to my friends. My grandparents were out at an event of some kind that night. I was sitting there playing my Game Boy Color 1998 when the doorknob started turning rapidly like someone was trying to get in. I checked and nobody was there. This happened three or four times while I was staying with them. My grandfather just shrugged and said, Yay, that happens when I brought it up. I still have no idea how a doorknob can twist on its own. Maybe some weird pressure disturbance or something, who knows. This happened to me when I was alone at work late at night. I was a reporter for a small town newspaper. I went to the office to write up a story that was due first thing in the morning. I used my key to enter the empty building. The newsroom was silent and dark. I was feeling guilty because I hadn't stopped by the hospital that day to check on Mimi, my grandma. But I made myself focus on getting the story written. As I sat at the computer typing, a white shape appeared on the screen. It was the shape of a person standing behind me. I leapt up and spun around, but nothing was there. On the off chance it was a reflection from a passing car, I shifted the computer around so that my back was no longer to the window. I forced myself to continue writing. Then the shape appeared again, a white figure standing behind me. Again I spun around to find nothing. That was enough for me. As I shut down the computer and reached for my coat, my phone rang. It was Mom, telling me that Mimi had just then passed away. In the ten years I worked at that office, I never before or after saw a reflection in the bright computer screen day or night. Maybe it was Mimi stopping by to say goodbye. I was laying on the bed when I decided, for no apparent reason, to stand up, back against my closest, and tried to meditate with my eyes closed. It was pitch black in my room, not the kind of, oh look it's night, I literally couldn't see anything, the blinds were fully down too, and it was around 9pm to 2am. 
After a while I decide to focus on my eyes for a few seconds, and then I open them. I got this rush of euphoria like I was I don't know a better version than myself. I could think at hyper speed, and for what it lasted I was so confident in myself. I can't quite explain other than I was a better version than myself. But the weirdness didn't end here. As soon as I opened my eyes, all of the contents of my room lit up like I had infrared but with white instead of green. I could see clear outlines of everything like it was nothing, and yet I knew it was still pitch black in there. It was so crazy it really felt like I had superpowers for that brief amount of time, and my depth perception on the objects was spot on. Not just a filter over my eyes, and there were no shadows. Every detail was highlighted. Then everything just suddenly faded and I was staring at. Just black, my vision returned to normal instantly, and the feeling of adrenaline and euphoria vanished with it. I tried to experience this again, but I never could it's different than your eyes adjusting in the dark, because you can't see anything in pitch black environments I could see with such clarity, such detail, it was beautiful. Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.